Hi guys, I'm Eileen. Today, I want to talk about how to seriously cut down on impulse shopping once and for all. I have nine very practical tips to share with you guys. These tips have worked wonders for me. I used to make so many shopping mistakes in the past and wasted so much money. But in the last few years, I've not actually done any impulse shopping. I still shop for luxury handbags, shoes and jewelry. But just being a bit more mindful has helped me to save so much money. And I'm also genuinely a lot happier with what I already have. And now without further ado, let's get right into it. So the very first tip to cut down on impulse shopping is to ask yourself, how many hours do I have to work to pay for this item? Now, it doesn't matter if you're working a job or running your own business. Essentially, you do need some kind of time commitment to generate an income. So in a way, we all have an hourly rate and we are kind of using our time to fund for our shopping. Now, this will not sound sexy, but every time you are tempted to buy something, I suggest you to ask yourself the question, how many hours do I have to work to pay for this item? So let's say if you make £50 an hour, is it really worth it to work 10 hours to buy this pair of shoes that cost £500? Quite often, if you actually sit down and run through the number, you might realise you are getting paid less than what's on the pay slip because of work-related expenses, such as travel and clothing. This is when you will have to be very honest with yourself because it will really put you into perspectives. And I promise you, you will never see shopping the same again. I mean, I mostly like my job, but just like a lot of people, there are still days I wish I don't have to go in. For example, when it's snowing outside, I just want to snuggle up in my blanket and have a big cup of coffee. Essentially, for everything that you don't buy today, those are the hours you don't have to work for to pay for these items. And these hours can be spent cuddling with your loved ones or doing a movie marathon. Don't get me wrong, I still shop, but just asking myself this one question does make me think long and hard before buying anything. The second tip to cut down on impulse shopping is to ask yourself the question, would I prefer cash? So a while ago, I read a book called Soulful Simplicity by Courtney Carver, and I picked up a wonderful tip on how to cut down on shopping. So the author suggested we should all make a thick shopping list. So basically, every time you're about to buy something, make a note of it and how much it costs and do that for the entire month, but don't actually buy anything. At the end of the month, add everything up and see how much these items would have cost you. Then ask yourself the question, would I rather have this amount of money in cash or do you still prefer the items? Doing this will give you a clear picture of how much impulse shopping could cost you financially. I've done this myself several times and many times I actually chose cash instead of my imaginary shopping list. Now, if you find this exercise a bit tedious to do, there's another way to see if cash is more appealing to you. I would suggest to look in your closet and in your room and see if there's any item you would trade in for the full amount you paid for if you have the option. If your answer is yes, just try to remember this feeling the next time you're about to cave in to an impulse purchase. Trust me, it works. The third question to ask yourself is, can I pay for this in full? And if the answer is no, walk away. I really don't think anyone should ever get into debt for shopping because consumer's debt usually comes with the highest interest and it's just completely not worth it for something that's completely discretionary. In fact, sometimes even when you could afford it, it doesn't mean you have to buy it. In the past, I used to go shopping on my paydays. I certainly paid for everything in full, but that definitely wasn't the best thing to do because now I can hardly remember half the things I bought. Now that I'm older, I actually enjoy the self-discipline I impose on myself and I truly believe that 
choosing not to buy something when you could afford it is sometimes way more satisfying than actually owning the item. Tip number four to cut down on luxury impulse shopping is to remind yourself that selling is hard. Quite often, when you buy something online or in the store, the sale is completed in a matter of seconds. You add the item to your cart and then take out your credit card and it's done. But when you bring the item home and if for whatever reason you don't like the item, selling is never as easy. The easiest and quickest way to sell a luxury item is to sell it through a consignment service. However, it's important to bear in mind that the right buyer will take some time to show up. Also, the commission charged by the consignment service can be quite substantial. In fact, some services are charging about 30% of the selling price. You can of course avoid the commission by selling the item yourself, but it can be a time-consuming task. Now I know, Lifestyles and preferences can change over time, so you might like something for 10 years and then decide it's time to let it go. But I think it doesn't do any harm to practice a bit more intentionality with everything we buy. So really take some time to see what you buy today will be something you'll be keeping for a long time. I think that in itself will cut down on a lot of impulse shopping. Tip number five is to sleep on it. Even if you have the slightest bit of hesitation about something you are thinking to buy. I mean, at the end of the day, things are just objects. And so if you come across something perfect for yourself, by all means, get it and enjoy it. But don't ever feel like you'll never be happy again. If you miss out on something beautiful, then rush into buying something really expensive. I'm a firm believer that if it's meant to be, it will be, at least for shopping. And so if I miss out on something today, I will consider my money safe and I believe the better item will show up one day. Tip number six is to consider the opportunity cost. This is something I talk about a lot on my channel because I think it's a very straightforward way for me to gauge how much I love a certain item before actually paying for it. So I often ask myself the question, can this money be spent on something else that might bring me more values or enjoyment? It can be learning a new skill, going to a beautiful place, or simply having the option to take four weeks off at a time. You know how people say money doesn't buy you happiness. I don't disagree, but I think money certainly gives us options. And so how we spend our money matters. Every time you commit to an impulse purchase, you are basically spending your options. Worse still, you might not even like the item in a few weeks time when the excitement passes. Another really good tip that has worked amazingly well for me is diversion. This is something I often do if I'm tempted by something that's not exactly on my wish list. So for example, I might go shopping today and come across a beautiful Chanel handbag. I would then ask myself, do I really want this bag? If there's any doubt at all, I will come home and transfer that amount of money straight into my investment fund and consider I've given myself a treat. This might sound really weird, but doing that kind of takes away the temptation right away and I actually feel satisfied and even empowered. So I suggest you to give it a try as well. So divert your money into your mortgage overpayment, student loan, or anything that's a priority in your life. And when you've done it, please let me know how it feels. Tip number eight is to practice the one in one out rule. This is something I've been trying to embrace, especially for the big ticket items like designer handbags and high end jewelry. Essentially, before I add a new piece, I first have to sell something from my collection. At first, I took this on because I was really conscious of the insurance costs I had to pay to cover all my luxury items. After a while though, I realized I really don't have to expand my collection too much to always look put together. In fact, I don't actually want my collection to grow so large that it becomes a burden to me physically, mentally, and financially. 
in the past, I used to admire bloggers with very extensive collection of luxury handbags, jewelry, and shoes. But now, I really see the beauty of having a curated wardrobe. For those of you who are still building a closet, you can also practice the one-in-one-out rule on your wish list. So for every impulse purchase you make, you will have to remove something from your wish list. Doing this will really help you prioritize where to spend your hard-earned money. Tip number nine to cut down on impulse shopping is to recognize that you don't have to have it all. Even though this is technically a luxury channel, I have no problem in saying that no one needs to dress in designer brands from head to toe to look good. And so, even if you enjoy luxury shopping, it really helps to identify where you would rather spend your money on. For example, if you mostly enjoy luxury handbags, don't feel obliged to buy designer clothes or high-end jewelry just because it feels like the norms on social media. At the end of the day, only you know what works best for you and your budget. The older I get, the more I feel like choosing not to have it all can feel really liberating rather than depriving. If you follow me for a while, you know I don't usually buy luxury costume jewelry or high heels. I'm also not keen on having a big collection of luxury small leather goods. When it comes to colors, I'm also very picky. But for me, choosing not to have it all makes me realize what truly works for me. So those are the nine very practical and effective ways that can help you cut down on impulse spending. I personally practice all these tips in my daily life and they really help me to become better with my money. If you have any other useful tips to suggest, please leave them in the comment section down below. I would love to know. So that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to share, like and subscribe. I will see you in my next one. Have a nice day.